Imagine turning endless stacks of PDFs into streamlined, actionable data with just a few clicks. No more tedious manual entries or loss of information. Microsoft Power Automate is revolutionizing the way that we handle our documents, making data extraction not only possible, but well, effortless. Now, whether you're a business professional uh, drawing in paperwork or a tech enthusiast looking to optimize workflows, mastering this cool tool can unlock unprecedented efficiency. Today, we're diving deep into the exact steps that you need to take to seamlessly extract data from PDFs, transforming chaos into clarity. Ready to revolutionize your data? Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in make.powerautomate.com. Now, for this to work, you do need to have a Power Automate premium license, but that should be about it. So let's go ahead and just quickly show you how to extract data from your PDFs. Okay, so we're gonna go over and create a new flow. We're gonna create an automated cloud flow. We're going to use a trigger from SharePoint. So it's gonna be um, SharePoint, and it's gonna be when a, um, when a file is either created or modified. Okay, so what's item when a, uh, that's depreciated, so that's not gonna work. Let me find the exact one that I'm looking for. Uh, it should be this one right here. When a file is created or modified, I'm going to give that a click. Okay, and I can give this a name. Uh, let's say it's extract um, data from PDF. There we go. Create. Now, for all the kind of um, clarity here, let's uh, go ahead and zoom in on this. Now, I don't like uh, the <laughs> this new look and feel uh, when it comes to uh, Power Automate. I find it's, um, it's, it's nice, it's modern, but I don't like it personally. So I usually turn this off and I go back to the classic view um, and you can kind of see that this trigger that I actually selected is a depreciated one. So we're going to go ahead and remove that to start with, and we'll just have a blank canvas here. We'll find SharePoint, uh, we'll navigate down here, and what we're looking for is when a file is created or modified, properties only, we'll go ahead and give that a click. That's going to be our trigger point. What we're going to do is we're going to search for the address. Okay, so for reference, what we're doing here is basically when a PDF is created or um, modified within my SharePoint folder, it's going to trigger this flow and I'm going to extract information from it. Okay, so we're going to use my accounts folder here or my Microsoft Teams uh, accounts uh, area. We're going to choose the library, which is documents, and then we're going to navigate to the folder that I'm going to watch for any new files or modified files, which is under share, uh, shared documents. It's going to be accounts, and then it's going to be invoices, and it's crunch, which I am monitoring. Okay, so that's your first trigger point setup. Okay, so straight off the bat here, what have we done? Well, we're now monitoring a specific folder in SharePoint, okay, which when I drop a new invoice into it, it's going to do something with that. Okay, so the next step is to get the contents from that because this is properties only we need to get some sharepoint um data so we're going to go ahead and basically go sharepoint again for the next flow in here we are going to get content so we're going to click sharepoint we are going to get uh, file content which should be somewhere down here um, it's going to be get file content uh, we have two options you've got get file content using path or get file content the trigger that we're using has the identifier of the file so we can just go ahead and use get file content again we're going to select where this file is going to be from which site it's going to be on it's going to be my one dot account site and then we're going to go ahead and use this little folder icon. Um, we actually, we don't need to do that. We just need to click into here, sorry. And in here, we have all of our dynamic content. We're going to scroll down and we're looking for the identifier. And I probably scrolled through it. Uh, it's right here. So identify. We'll give that a click. And there you go. Now our, we've got the content of our PDF right here. Now we need to do something with it, right? Now we need something that's going to basically extract that information. We're going to use artificial intelligence within Power Automate. So for that, we're going to go into AI Builder. Um, and it's going to be right here, AI Builder. From this, we want to extract invoice data. So my PDFs are specifically invoices. There are lots of different things that you can do here to extract text from PDFs 
PDFs and so forth. But we're using the AI or using the AI model that already thinks in, and is already kind of expecting invoices makes this process a little bit easier for the purpose of tutorial. So this here, extract information from invoices. I'm going to click that and that's going to load up this, uh, this little section. And basically it wants the invoice file, it wants the content. Okay, so in here we're going to grab the dynamic content that is file content. We're going to drop that into there and it's going to now have all of that at its disposal. Okay, uh, so at this point that we probably want to hit save because it's important that we save our work as we continue here. And we could probably go ahead and run a test. Okay, we can go ahead and manually test this. Okay, but for this to work, obviously, I need to go ahead and put a file into that um, that folder. So I'll go ahead and basically bring up the documents here. You can see I've got quite a few different copies. Um, I'm going to go ahead and essentially copy this one right here and paste it in. It's going to be uh, this invoice with copy after it. We'll just minimize that back down again and we'll wait for this to get triggered within our Power Automate flow. And there we go. So now what's gone on here is it's, it detected that a file has been ad added to our folder. It's got the contents of it and it's passed it to the AI model. The AI model is now going ahead and basically going through everything and seeing what's what. So in here, we can see that it's extracted some pretty in decent information. You've got the billing address uh, recipient. That would be my company there. You've got uh, the confidence in which it has uh, kind of identified that. It has 91.6% confidence in it. Uh, customer name, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. You have due date. Uh, you've got confidence in that information. You've got invoice date itself. Uh, you've got else have you got in here? You've got all those confidences. You've got invoice IDs, uh, the invoice totals, the subtotals, the currencies, the currency symbols, tax, um, all of this information in here, including uh, the vendor's address, the uh, vendor uh, address uh, receipt, uh, the name of the, the company and so forth. Um, you've even got tax ID at the bottom there as well. So some really useful information has come through on our extract information from invoices. So now we can go ahead and click edit. And this is going to bring back up our flow here. Okay. And now we want to do something with this information. Now you can do lots of different things at this stage. And I really want to stress that because at this point you can go off into lots of different angles with your data. Okay. You can go ahead and add it directly into Microsoft Excel. You can go ahead and um, you know, create new PDFs with that information if you want to rebrand it in some way. Or as I'm going to do in this particular email, invoice, uh, oh, this particular tutorial. I say is email this information to myself. So I'm going to go ahead and click new step and I'm going to type email. Um, from here, I'm going to click my office 365 and it's going to be to basically send an email. So send an email v2, give that a click. I'm going to send it to myself. So I'm just going to click Nick uh, or type Nick, I should say, put my name in there um, or you paste in as many email addresses as you want, of course. The subject will be invoice uh, like so or invoice uh, details. Um, and then in the body, we can go ahead and uh, type some text. So type some text. I don't know what to say. Um, put a comma. And then underneath this, we can add various pieces of information from our previous uh, area. Now, we can obviously make this very neat. Uh, we can obviously make this very rough. Um, for example, I can go ahead and put in all of this information just in a linear list within my email if I wanted to. So I can go ahead and just um, say that I want to find within our dynamic content here, I'm going to look for the invoice ID. Okay. And if I wanted to, I could uh, type at the front of this as well, invoice uh, number, for example, because that's what I'd Collecting, could put that in there, could go down a line. Um, I could uh, go ahead and basically put a uh, customer name if I wanted to or name or whatever um, and then go ahead and put that in there. And you can see you can build this up. I'm going to just go ahead and say uh, amount due. And this could be really useful if uh, you want to kind of, you know, um, make sure that everyone kind of is kind of paying their invoices on time. You could create a whole automated flow with process uh, flows in place so that if it isn't all actioned um, and you could keep track of that within, let's say, Teams, you could trigger automated emails uh, on the back of this as well. Uh, there's so many different things that you could do. Um, total tax in here. I'm just seeing if I can find um, subtotal, um, subtotal symbol. 
so I could go in symbol and then put in subtotal there and that should come through perfectly fine. I'll click save. I'll leave it at that. I don't want to go into too much detail because there's so many different things you could do at this stage. I'll go ahead and I'll use the automatic test based on the previous flow. And I'm going to go ahead and click on test on there. This will basically take the previous trigger and then run it back through Power Automate. Um, and then we'll see if there are any issues with sending the email. When not, of course, we'll check the email output as well in just a moment. So we'll just let the uh, AI just run through that for a second. Okay, so it sent the email um, and you can see it right here. I'm going to go ahead over to my email inbox and you can see right here invoice number, the customer name, which actually isn't, uh, well, actually is the customer name and the amount due. Now we do have a double um, currency symbol here so we do know that we need to change that and um, so we could come back into our flow here click on edit and basically remove that symbol there because it is already included in the subtotal click save and that would be that we're completely done we've extracted the information from our pdf invoice and emailed it to ourselves like i say there's many different things that you could do with this information you could basically grab and extract all the information from your invoice and go ahead and throw it directly into a Excel spreadsheet, keeping track of all of your expenses with ease. There's also a lot of other AI models that you can mess around with in terms of extracting maybe receipt information and manage your expenses very differently. Alternatively, like I said earlier, you could also create a bit of an approval flow where you can create the invoice, or let's say have the invoice extract the information from the invoice, process that inform information into an appro approval flow where you can either send that to someone who needs to approve the invoice before payment and get a whole process put in place to streamline your operations. The possibilities are almost endless. If you found this useful, informative, smash the like button for me, guys. I really do appreciate that. Consider subscribing for more content on keeping the, up to date with the hints and tips that I have for you guys when it comes to Microsoft 365. If you found it useful, you know what to do. And of course, don't forget to check that video out right there. It's one you probably don't want to miss.